So here we are at the Brompton factory. But I'm going to confess, this is not going to be just another Brompton factory tour. And here we are at Unit 19. Today, we have been invited to Brompton to go through their testing on their new T200. Well, their G-Line to everyone else. I'm here with Will Carley-Smith. Thank you, Hannah. So yeah, um, my name is Will. I'm the Chief Design and Engineering Officer at Brompton. We make products which are tough. You know, we talk a lot about these things being tools. You know, they're not toys. They're things you use every day. And we want to make products that last a long time. Like we hate the idea that a bicycle is something that you only have for a few years. You know, we want you to have this thing for, for decades. In order to do that, we do a huge amount of testing. We do a huge amount of validating. We do that right from the sort of concept stage. So on something like G-Line, three, four years ago, uh, we were you know, testing the ideas, finding the weak points, uh, and we repeat. We do it again again and again and again. We're a company with quite a tight product range, you know, the product range at Brompton isn't big, but we do an unusually large amount of things within that. So unlike a lot of bike companies, we design our own pedals and gears and brakes and, you know, everything that goes into it. And that's what allows us to get the bike so compact. To do that and do that properly, we have to have quite a broad range of test equipment. So the kind of gear we have to test the bike covers an awful lot of different stuff. Which is what we're going to look at now. I'm going to go inside. I can't wait. Okay, test rig number one. This is a handlebar test rig. It's testing in accordance with the ISO standards, which needs to do 100,000 cycles of the left and right up and down. And interestingly, this actually is the mountain bike standard, not a city bike. So it's worked really, really brutal, and it needs to not break. Brompton tests it generally to at least two or three iterations, or until it breaks. Look at that flexing. It's insane. I'm going to have to now try and bend my stem that much at home. It's never going to happen. It's replicating you standing up and pushing really hard, or pushing and pulling. And it does 270 newtons each side, up and down. So this testing is a bit like an accordion for a bicycle. It's replicating really heavy braking or going down a curb. They're applying 600 newtons, front and rear. Again, they have to do 100,000 iterations, but regularly they'll go up to 500,000 iterations. This test is a really harsh test for this type of bicycle. It's got no suspension, and looking at the geometry, it's really hard for it to pass, but yet it does, repeatedly. This test rig is actually the only one in the UK. It was made specifically by Brompton for the G-Line because it's the first bike they've had that has disc brakes. So we're testing, or they are testing, the forces that are exerted when it breaks on the frame. Wow. Now I challenge you to break that hard. Because I break quite hard and I don't break that hard. So it's 500 newtons in the direction of braking and 50 newtons the other way. That's pretty harsh. This is an early type of fatigue tester that Brompton use. It's specific for the Brompton and currently they're testing the C9 electric forks. But what's really interesting is that's what's then taken the development into the assessment, for example, of the G-Line forks and all of the other testing that we've seen today. Because Brompton realised it was easier and quicker to have all of their testing in-house rather than outsourcing it to places that would be based, for example, in Germany. So when you go on holiday to a humid, hot country, you want to know that your gearing system will actually keep going. Well, Brompton have checked that it will. So they're testing at 40 degrees and 95% relative humidity. That's pretty tough on your drive chain. Can you imagine your poor chain? It's just being degreased as it's working. So obviously, if you're going to Singapore, for example, to go out for a nice ride with all of your Brompton followers that you need to do one day, that's why it needs to be tested. And we'll be fine. That's why your G-Line keeps going. So interestingly, these dampers across the top are specific to Brompton. And actually it makes it a bit fairer and a little bit more like you were actually riding it and helping out a little bit. That's brutal. So what's really nice is you can see the guts of how it's actually working. Thanks Brompton for making it personal. So 
So some of the tests that Bromptons do in-house are specific to Bromptons and the folding mechanism. They're not based on any form of ISO test because, well, it's a folding bicycle. And this is focusing on the cables and how they fold every time it gets folded. And do they cope with it repetitively? So this machine is testing the hub and it's putting it at different pressures. So for example, you've got to the lights, you're in a completely rubbish gear, you've frantically changed down, and then you've got to go up a really steep hill. So it's doing different gears and diff under different pressures, and they can play with different scenarios. Cool. For hours. So now we're at high torque and low cadence. So a bit how I cycle, a bit mashy. and now we're spinning faster. So you know when you fold your Brompton badly and you hit your roller wheels on the floor and they don't break, this is why. Because they're tested and they're designed not to break. Impressive. Thumping. It's obviously also testing the frame and the bearings and how well they put up with being thumped over and over again. So obviously this is a Brompton specific testing rig. This is based on a frame impact ISO test. And what Brompton are assessing is if I've been an idiot and I've taken my G line to the North Shore and I'm gonna go down a big rock roll, will it be in one piece at the bottom? Well, we'll find out. The answer is yes. So this is Brompton's wet weather test rig. Um, I think it's just a sludge machine because it's going to subject the G line to two types of sand, some clay, some potter's clay, and some topsoil with loam in it because you're gonna take your G-line into loamy trails, right? So anyway, it's testing the gearing and whether it will actually keep working. But interestingly, this is the electric motor. So let's shut him in. And then ask one, someone to turn him on. Oh, I can't wait. I get to press some buttons. So now we're gonna start the bicycle. And then we're going to start the pump. Then we're going to watch. I hope you've got your glasses on because you're going to get a really dirty face. Or maybe you've got mud guards. Mud guards are a good idea with this. Yucky. You need to come here. You need to see it from this angle. You're just getting plastered in sludge. So, as it's being plastered in sludge, it's changing gears to see how well it's going to perform on those dirty gravel rides that you'll be doing. So our followers that have been following the G-Line and the G-Line Electric would have noticed that the G-Line Electric has a rear wheel motor. Well, there's a few reasons for that. One, it's a G-Line, so you're going to be riding it off of the road on gravel roads and you want it to push from the back end rather than pull from the front or push from the front. Also, Brompton now have their four-speed derailleur system, which is proprietary, and they can use it on their four-speed motor. So these rigs here are testing the motor, and apparently it has gone to the moon and back and been temperature cycled, which is, let's face it, the worst thing for a motor. And do you know what? The motor's made it all the way to the moon and back. This might look boring, but actually it's a big deal. And battery safety to Brompton is a massive thing. The C and P line batteries were tested to the highest European standards at the time. The G line battery is tested to a higher standard. It's a UL standard. Batteries that are sold in New York City have to be tested to this standard. And that's the, what the G, G line battery is tested to. Oh, incidentally, and really importantly, the UL standard requires the battery to sub be subjected to crushing, bashing, and really anything that you could accidentally do to your battery, short-circuiting it. And do you know what? It passes them. Well done, Brompton. So the safety testing of the battery is done external to Brompton because it needs specific tests that are specific for battery testing. However, what is done in-house is the discharge cycle. So they look at the performance of your Brompton battery over time, when it's charged, discharged, charged, discharged, keep going, um, and see how it performs. 
So this bit of equipment is temperature cycling the brains of your G-Line Electric. So it's got the control unit in there and currently it's at minus 14. It goes all the way down to minus 20 and then all the way back up to 80 and then back down again. And it keeps doing it for like three months. And by the way, it is actually on because the battery is effectively here, or sorry, the motor. So we're testing its brains. Brompton have developed the G-Line Electric software in-house. And this box has really helped to optimize the performance of that software because they can run loads of different scenarios and put real-time data generated on bicycles into the box. But importantly, it saves a lot of time. You don't have to send out people riding on Brompton G-Line Electrics. We've named this ERIC, the Electric Reliability Integrated Checker. And actually what it does is allows the motor to drive the bicycle along, which is, let's face it, a lot more elaborate than sending me out for a really long ride on an e-bike. And then they get lots of feedback and nice pretty things, lots of data to analyze and check your electric bike is riding for as long as you want it to. Thanks, Eric. Finally, we've got someone else in our video, Clint. So once the materials have been selected, Clint does the building, and then it goes downstairs to do the testing. Hence the build, test, learn, repeat. This is the building. So the amazing thing about Brompton Bicycles is that they design and manufacture the majority of their parts in-house. So let's face it, once they've been designed, someone needs to make them. Or mill them. So the beauty of Brompton being able to modify or make their frames in-house is it meant that they could prototype and make a prototype, for example, like this, and then test it using forks like this that have different positions. So they can do A-B testing and see what position was best for which geometry. So the thing is, they had a prototype that looked like this. And then, after testing, they came up with a prototype that looks like this, which is much more like the G-Line that we now know today. So when we were lucky enough to first visit Brompton, I was absolutely blown away by all of the testing and all of the, the time that they've taken to make our bicycles so robust. And now I know why, as they build them, they test them, they learn, and then they repeat. And it's amazing. And that is why the Bromptons are so robust and they keep going for years. And I have my lovely blue bicycle that's still going and his really old and a bit battered. And for some reason, I want to call him Henry the Handlebar Tester. But the ISO standard is 100,000 right. repetitions, that's each side, that's right. and it shouldn't break. That's right. Correct. I should imagine we need to pull the thingy thingy down. So according to the ISO standards, they have to do 20,000 cycles of braking, and I can't remember the pressure. So, this is an early type of... Ugh. So the main reason is to see how strong the hydraulic cable is and the gear cable? No, 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 the cable. So the main reason we're doing this, no? Yeah? No? I'm in a press it's going to be loud, a little bumpy. So this is based on an ISO frame impact test. And basically what we're doing, no, can I do it again? What is done in-house is how well your battery performs. So they discharge the battery and refill it over and over again. And I believe it's in different temperatures, humidities. So this is an ESTA, an electric systems test trick. Is that correct? Okay. Today, we've called this Eric. The electric... Was that not supposed to do that? The electric bike reliability checker. This looks like it might be a titanium rear triangle. No, it's not. It's not titanium at all. You can't go in that room. It's testing. Yeah, it is pretty loud. Um... Just say this one might be loud. Okay. This one could be loud. This is replicating a big, heavy person, really loaded, 
on a G-Line. <laughs>